Take two. <sighs> Crap. <sighs> Hi guys, Dr. Dillard. We're going to do our lab just a little ahead of time today. I can use my home setup here to get some nice images for you guys. It is week seven at Spinal Anatomy Lab demonstration. This is the same demo I gave the live lab people that I saw today. So we're starting the cervical spine. And so this is a cervical vertebrae. And you can tell it's much smaller than what we've what we've seen before. And let's look at the parts. So we still have a vertebral body here. We have some weird little ears kind of sticking up on it though. Those are called the uncinate processes. I'll try to give you another view of that here in a second. Um, we still have pedicles. There's a pedicle. There's another pedicle right here. And the pedicles connect to a kind of the uh, a posterior arch, if you will, or a vertebral arch is better to call. We should call that the vertebral arch. The vertebral arch is mainly made, of, made up of lamina. There's the right lamina. There's the left lamina. Of course, I should back up maybe for you beginners. This is the front, right? The vertebral body's in the front, so that's anterior, posterior, left lateral, right lateral. This is an overhead view or an S to I view. We can see that the the roof forms, or the two laminae, form a nice little hole right here. So that's the, that's the that will be the spinal canal or vertebral canal. Uh, this is the vertebral foramen because it's only one segment. If I had two segments, then I could go right through the vertebral canal. Spinous process is definitely weird on this, isn't it? Uh, so it's kind of pointed. It kind of it splits. So that's called a bifid spinous process, and that is unique to the cervical vertebrae. Uh, we can also see a long shelf of bone here. So uh, these are going to be, well, these what we're looking at here is the superior articular process uh, of the articular pillar. And I'll show you another view here in a second of the articular pillar, but there's a very smooth surface right here, and that is the facet joint. So this, if I'm pointing to this structure, that's technically the facet of the superior articular process. Uh, there's the left facet of the superior articular process. If I'm pointing down here, this is inferior articular process. Where are the facets? The facets are actually on the front here. Facets face forward. The superior facets of the articular pillars, if you will, they face backwards. All right, uh, let's see, what else can we say? So there's definitely some weirdness here, right? You have these holes. Uh, those are transverse foramen, called transverse foramen, and those are for, for the vertebral artery, which we'll talk a lot about. So that's unique. Transverse processes are unique, right? We have double-strutted transverse processes. Uh, so we have a anterior strut here, and there's the posterior strut right there. And there's a, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a bump right here. So that's the anterior tubercle of the transverse process. There's a bump, it's not very distinct here. C6 has the most distinct bumps, but that's the posterior tubercle. And the two tubercles are connected with a piece of bone right here. And because it's in between, gets the word inter, it's be, be, because it's between tubercles, you get tuber in there, so it's the intertubercular lamellae. It's this piece right there. You did, definitely need to know that, intertubercular lamellae. Right? The other thing that's interesting is that we have a really big vertebral notch, superior vertebral notch, right? This, this scoop right here would be the superior vertebral notch. 
And the other thing interesting is look at the nerve root, which you can't see here. I'll show you a picture in a minute. But the nerve root goes that direction, unlike the thoracic and lumbar spine, where it goes straight out like that. Uh, this neural foramen, or at least half of the neural foramen here, is pointing about 45 degrees to the front. So that's another unique thing of the uh, of the cervical spine. You can also see it over here. All right, so that is pretty much all the parts from this view. Uh, let's try to, let's see, try to flip it up like this. So I'll hold it steady, but uh, this is anterior. This is posterior, of course, the spinous processes. I don't know how good this is going to come out. But you can see the articular pillar quite nicely here. This is all articular pillar. And you could see, uh, you can't really see that good, but that's the facet of the superior articular process. This is superior articular process. This is all inferior articular process. And the facet, if I tip it a little bit, there's the facet of the inferior articular process right there. Okay, but there's a nice view of the uh, the articular pillar. Lamina would be right here. If you can see the lamina back here as well. All right. So what else did I want to show you? I mean, we can flip it up like this. How do I know this is? What if um, when we used to do testing live, I would throw this up, and I'd say. I'd say, what is this, a superior view, or an I to S view, or an S to I view? Well, you can see that the facets are facing forward. Um, so this must be, these must be the inferior, the facets of the inferior articular processes here. Um, you can see pedicle right here. You can also see, this is called the root of the transverse process, the anterior strut, the root of the anterior strut right here root connects to the vertebral body. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, let's, the other concept I wanted to talk about is, let's see. Let's see if I can find a mate for that. Okay, now those aren't those aren't perfect mates for each other, uh, but you can see how they they fit on top of one another. If I turn them up like this, try to hold them here. I don't know how well that's going to get a little support for my hand there. So now that's kind of a head-on view. Hopefully, it'll focus right on that. Um, but you can see how these these little rays, these little Batman ears, I call them, those are the uncinate processes. You can actually see they make a joint together right here. And this joint is called the onchovertebral joint. And it's made between the superior, or between the uncinate process of the bone below and a facet for the uncinate process of the bone above. It is a true diarthroidal joint. Of course, the disc would be right here between them. So if this is C5, this would be the C5 disc, and uh, this would be C6 right here. The disc gets the name by the bone that sits on it and conquers it. You can't see the neural foramen very good, but if I rotate this a little bit, I have no idea how this is going to look like on the, on the video. But if I rotate this, we can see the neural foramen right here coming at running at about 45 degrees. So that is the story there. And uh, what else can I tell you? I think that's really about it. They're pretty they're pretty straightforward. All right. 
So that was take one. Of course, I forgot to turn my the side light on. I do have this other light on, but I can hit that light on as well. And now I got so much lotion on my fingers that it's showing up on the it's showing up, which ain't good. Now we need a back way out for this. my bone here, hang on. You are. Uh, where did it go? I don't know where it went. My bone escaped. Oh my god, are we still recording? I think I actually am still recording. Oh my god, I am still recording. And I got that other light on, and where that freaking bone went, I have no idea. It disappeared. How can it disappear? It can't go that way because of the wood. Jesus Christ. Ah. <sighs> Let's get this done. All right, so here's a kind of a little Photoshop deal I made up of a motion segment. We can see this better. So on the worksheet today, this was going to be C5. This is going to be C6. What disk is that going to be? Well, that's the C5 disk, right? Whoever sits on it conquers it. But all of this nerve stuff is going to be C6. So remember that, of a motion segment, the top bone gets the disc, but the bottom bone gets all the nerves. Um, and this is just a basic cartoon here. We have a motor branch, sensory branch come together to form the spinal nerve. Spinal nerve is very short-lived and splits into this anterior piece and a posterior piece. So that's the ventral or anterior ramus. This is the posterior ramus. Posterior ramus is kind of short-lived, too, and splits into different pieces. Uh, there would be a, a lateral branch here, an intermediate branch, which I didn't draw. This is the medial branch right here, and this is kind of a weird drawing. But the, the point I wanted to make of this is the medial branch uh, of C6 splits, uh, and there's an upper and a lower, or upper and lower fibers. The upper fibers... The upper fibers supply the same level Z joint or facet joint. So this is, of, of course, the C5, C6 zygapotheseal joint. And I drew a little Photoshop capsule. It's filled with synovial fluid. It's a real diarthrodial joint, right? That's what chiropractors adjust is this joint right here. But it also has an inferior branch that goes down and supplies, supplies the, the segment below. So this is C6, C7 is not in here, but uh, it also supplies C6, C7. So that's an important uh, point to note. 
Uh, you can also see the uncinate process here, or just one uncinate process. That would be the facet. It's going into the facet of the uncinate process. Can't really see it on this little kind of put a piece of uh, clay in here to act as a disc. Uh, vertebral bodies, you can see superior implate uh, would be right here. Inferior bony implate would be right there. What else can we see? That's the superior vertebral notch. The inferior vertebral notch is in there. Um, it's kind of the transverse process is kind of blocking it. There's the intertubercular mele here. But there is an inferior and a superior vertebral notch that you can see. Of course, this is the neuroforamen. How would you name that? Well, if that's C5, this is the C5 slash 6 neuroforamen, or you could also call it the C5 neuroforamen. And I think that's about all I wanted to say there. Of course, there's the bifid spinous process of C6, and there's spinous process of part of it you can see of C5. Those are nutrient foramen. Did I say that? Those are where the, uh, the veins and arteries go in and supply the bone. The bone is living tissue. All right, uh, this, what if I, what's this? What's well, superior articular process? Is there a facet there? No, the facet's on the other side, so that's just superior articular process of C5. How about this? Well, that's a nice smooth surface. That's the inferior articular process, the facet of the inferior articular process of C6. All right, so get to work on your worksheets. I'll uh, take any email questions you want. I'll be available this time. You can, you can email me anytime. I don't care if it's on Sunday. I'm constantly looking at my email. So if you ever have any questions, send me an email. All right, see you later. Hmm. Oh, I'm sugar crash a little bit.